My name is David Hummels. I will be teaching the course in International Economics in our master sequence. This introductory video is to tell you a little bit about myself and a little bit about the course. So just briefly about me, I'm a professor of economics. I've got a 1995 PhD from Michigan and I've been at Purdue since 2000. I'm a specialist in international trade research. I think a lot about offshoring, barriers to trade, I've thought a lot about product differentiation in international markets, and the role that aviation, airplanes, have played in totally reshaping international commerce. I've also done a lot of work as a consultant to various U.S. government agencies and international government agencies, and that informs the way I teach the class, because I think what we need to think about is is, or issues that are policy relevant, that are uh, real world and happening today. And you'll see that threaded through almost everything that we do. If you want more information on me, you can follow the link here or go uh, Google my name and you'll find a website with lots of additional information. This course is going to answer four questions. What are the important differences across countries? How do they give rise to arbitrage opportunities? trade, finance, migration, technology flows? What are, the, what are the frictions that impede those opportunities? And how do global interactions change firms and countries that engage in them? Now that's pretty broad. We're going to apply those same questions over and over again in a variety of contexts. We'll wrestle with these specific topics. What drives income and population growth across countries? Why do countries engage in trade or more generally global exchange? Uh, that helps us to answer questions like, how does globalization affects fir affect firms and workers? What are your labor market opportunities in a, in a global environment? Well, that'll enable us also to think about more recent uh, hot topics like offshoring, foreign migration, uh, foreign investment. And we'll also think about uh, the role of differences in scale economies, product differentiation. And that helps us think more about uh, uh, you know, the role of, of innovating firms and, and how they look different. And then finally, we'll talk about the institutions that govern trade and how countries intervene in markets. And we'll do some standard analysis there, but we'll also try to think pretty hard about things that are going on uh, today. Now, our approach in the class, I think, is at least as important as the particular topics, and so I want to spend a few minutes telling you about that. Focus on three different things. The idea of models as maps, we'll have a strong focus on data, and then finally, bringing frontier research into the classroom in an accessible way. So, to think about the first issue, I want to take you to Google Maps. This is a picture, clearly a map of the United States. It's really, really useful for getting a macro scale of what's going on. And so a lot of what we will do will start very zoomed out, very macro scale. And then what we will do is we will start to zoom in. So I'm going to zoom in now on Purdue University in Lafayette, Indiana. And as we do that, as we pick up more detail in the map, we can see lots of information we didn't have before. Street names, where rivers and highways are, and so on. But we've lost the macro perspective, right? If we drill down even further, I'm a big bicyclist, and so I like to use maps like this to understand where bike, bike trails are, right? Uh, so that's useful, and then if I take that and I layer on some additional detail, terrain maps, I can see, for example, where I can bike, uh, and uh, avoid having to climb a lot of hills, okay? I've zoomed in, I've taken a different cut of the data, a different cut of what's happening in the world, but I've lost a little bit of perspective. And so having zoomed in, it can be useful to zoom back out again and see where we've been in the larger context. And so as we go back and forth in thinking about data, and thinking about models to interpret what's going on in the world, you'll see that same flavor. Give a broad macro perspective. Zoom in on a particular issue. Take different slices or different maps of the problem. Sometimes we want a street map. Sometimes we want to see bicycle trails or terrain. And so you'll get that idea as we try to approach these issues about labor markets or capital markets or what firms are doing to differentiate their products. Going back and forth. Models are never right or wrong. 
They are only more or less useful, more or less applicable in different circumstances. And so I'm going to teach you how to develop some simple models as maps to the global economy. The second thing we're going to do is to focus really intensively on data. To do that, what I want to do is rely on some publicly available uh, data sources and data applications so that you can spend more of your time in class understanding the data and not playing around with spreadsheets or something like that. So for example, a tool that we're going to use a lot is Gapminder. Right? So what I've drawn up here on Gapminder is a graph of life expectancy against income per person. This gives you both a time series dimension. This is a plot for 1916. Uh, and we can see a cross country dimension. So here's the United States, here's India, and here's so China, and here's India. We're going to use this in our very first uh, uh, class lecture on income growth and population growth. Now, what's really interesting about this is we can see the evolution over time. So focus initially here. Average life expectancy in India in 1960 is 24 years. Think about that. 24 years is the average life expectancy 100 years ago in India. Whereas in the US, it's more like 54 years. It's a lot better than 24, but it's not that great. What has happened as countries have grown richer over time? So follow the evolution of these countries. There's the US getting much richer and China and India going backwards. But now here they come. They're coming on strong as we get to a more global era. And here these countries come. They've significantly increased the or closed the gap to the US. But life expectancy now has really changed. It's all the way up to 66 years in India, 75 years in China, and 79 years in the US. Okay, so that's just a very simple example of how you can use a data tool to very quickly uh, evaluate differences across countries and over time. And we're going to use things like that to quickly explore data, to keep our focus on what's happening in the world, and then to think about how to apply our models, our maps of the world, to, to understanding cross-country differences and how things are evolving over time. The last thing that we're going to do is to bring in frontier research in an accessible way. International economics is an area where there's a lot of dynamic innovation going on in academia. People are thinking hard about what's happening in the world, they're bringing new data sets online in exciting ways, and they're really cracking the nut of what's going on in the world. And the, so that's all great. The problem is that if you were to just pick up a journal article, a lot of it's highly technical, very complicated, hard to understand. So our goal here is to get to the core idea behind that research. So I'm going to be your translator. I'm going to bring in frontier research. We're going to talk about what's going on uh, among the leading thinkers in the field, but we'll bring it to the classroom in an accessible way. And as a result, you're going to find that you learn not just basic tools and understand the data in a really rich way, you're going to understand what leading thinkers are wrestling with and how they're using these models, how they're using this data to understand the global economy. I look forward to seeing you in class.